Hello and welcome. My name is Keith Barker and there's nothing more fun than a walkthrough. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to walk through one of the three scenarios that I created as part of a free packet tracer lab. Let me introduce you to the topology and then we'll do the walkthrough. And many of you are going to want to attempt this lab or work with it before you do the walkthrough. And if so, you can download the base configs right here at thekeithbarker.com. Just look for the lab with the date 2020 11 13. And in this walkthrough, we are going to focus on lab number one. So here's our networks 1010, 1020, and 1030. We want reachability from the laptop to the server. And for scenario number one, the multi layer switch. We want to use layer three interfaces for gig 101 and also for 102. So with that in mind, let's open up the base lab, save it as lab number one and get to work. And I've saved it as lab one. So let's open up the multi-layer switch by clicking on it and click on the tab for CLI, command line interface. And let's do a show IP interface brief. All right, cool. So we don't have any IP addresses whatsoever on this multi-layer switch. And we want gig 101 and 102 to both be layer three interfaces. So to do that, we're going to go into interface config for each of them. So we'll go into configuration mode, interface gig one slash zero slash one, and we'll do a no switch port, which is how you train a port that you want it to be a layer three interface, very similar to what a router interface looks like by default. And now that it's a layer three interface, we'll go ahead and give it the IP address of 10.2.0.2 .2 on that interface with IP address 10.2.0.2 with a 24 bit mask. All right, next let's go ahead and tackle gig 102. So we'll go into interface config for gig one slash zero slash two, and we'll do a no switch port. And now that it's a layer three port, so this is up here on the 10.3 network. So it's 10.3.0.2 is the last octet is gonna be a dot two on all of its layer three interfaces and a 24 bit mask. If you need to learn the basics of IP addressing, join me for subnet Saturdays, the series, the playlist here on YouTube, it's got all those details. And we also have lots of other videos on my CCNA playlist regarding switching, multi-layer switching and routing as well. So let's check our work real quick. Show IP interface brief, and I'll put a pipe and say exclude and unassigned. So the exclude of UNASSIG will simply say if there's any uh, output that has that in the line, it just won't show it. And that'll save us a little bit of scrolling. So here we have the two interfaces. They're both layer three with 10.2.0.2 and 10.3.0.2. So let's verify we can ping. Let's do a show CDP neighbors. It's a great way to verify. Yep. So off of our local 101, we are learning about R1. And if we want to verify its IP address, R1's IP address, we can do a detail, press enter. And sure enough, right here, 10.2.0.1. So let's do a ping to 10.2.0.1. And if that works, that'll be great. We might lose initial packet on an ARP request. That's okay. And let's also have the multi-layer switch ping the server at dot 50. So we'll do a ping to 10.3.0.50. And we might have one that times out due to ARP. And if we do it again, that's going to work great. Okay, super. So our goal, now that we have these layer three interfaces configured on this multi-layer switch, we need full connectivity. So to pull that off, this multi-layer switch needs to know about that network. And this router needs to know about that network if we want the laptop and the PC to be able to talk to each other. So we could use some static routing, that would work, but we could also just use OSPF. Let's do that instead. So we'll go into configuration mode, router OSPF1. <laughs> and it says, well, you might want to enable routing on this device first. So we'll do that IP routing. So IP routing is now enabled, and now we'll do router OSPF process ID1 network and a wildcard mask of all bits and area zero, and now all interfaces are part of OSPF. We'll do a show IP OSPF, press enter, and right here it shows number of interfaces in area zero is two, and that would be the two layer three interfaces that we just configured a moment ago. Now next, let's go over to R1, and let's enable it for OSPF as well. So we'll go into configuration mode on R1, and we'll do router OSPF process ID one network, and we'll just use the wildcard bits all on again, area zero, and we'll also hit the fast forward button a few times right here. <laughs> so we don't have to wait for it. And there we go, full adjacency. So now if we do a show IP route. This guy has an OSPF learned route, great. R1 knows about the 10.3 network. And if we go to multi-layer switch two, we do a show IP route, space OSPF. MLS2 knows about the 10.1 network, that's fantastic. So if we did a ping to 10.1.0.50, that's the, PC, the laptop's IP address, uh, that should work. Oh, yeah, that's great. And R1 should be able to ping the server. So if we just go to the laptop at this point, 
and let's try a home run all the way across. So click any tab for desktop for this laptop device. Let's go to a command prompt and let's do a trace. Trace RT to 10.3.0.50. That's the IP address of the server. And that looks good. The first hop is R1. The second hop is the multi-layer switch, specifically the gig 101 interface. And then the final destination is being hit, which is the server itself. And if we close that and we open up a browser, we could go to the IP address of that server, 10.3.0.50. And there it is. Da, 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 da. Awesome. So also when we make changes, we'd also want to go ahead and save those with a copy run start, or we can use the shortcut of WR that works too. And then let's go ahead and open up the original baseline in preparation for our next lab. So we'll click on file and we'll say open. It's asking me if I want to save my work from this lab. I'll say yes. And then I'll open up the baseline and then I'll go to file, save as, and I'll call this guy lab two. And by doing so, that puts us back at the base configuration where we're now ready to do lab number two, which we'll do in a separate video. So I'll see you in that lab as well. Meanwhile, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Do you ever feel you don't get out what you're putting in?